Greetings everyone, this is Force Nature coming at you with an announcement that I am proud to make. It feels like it just happened overnight, but I officially have over 5,000 subscribers now. That is seriously awesome. Yay. I think if I get to 10,000 subscribers, I can make like shirts and stuff. As my gift to you, you guys have supported me for a long time, which I highly appreciate. Or hell, even those that have just joined recently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over five different playstyles and five different characters for Dead or Alive 6 or Dead or Alive 5 last round, but I feel like it, and for Soul Calibur 6. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas fun boys and fun girls. Oh, and before I forget, if you have any trouble with any of the terminology in this video, then check out this video here to help shed some light on the nature of fighting game notation. Anyways, let's get to it. It is only fitting that we open up with the most common playstyle, Rushdown. Most players at one point or another have employed this playstyle, which can also be known as buttons. Alright, alright. There's more to rush down than just simply pressing buttons. Rush down can be kind of defined as keeping the opponent on the defensive through pressure, mix ups, and frame traps mostly. In Dead or Life 6 and Dead or Life 5 last round, Kokoro is good at rush down. For starters, she has strings that can lead to any hit level. For instance, what this implies is that after Kokoro does something like a PP, and if the opponent blocks it, they have to end up um, checking to see if we end up going like high, mid, or low. And to top it off, Kokoro is pretty damn safe in general also. In essence, the pressure comes from the opponent having to respect Kokoro's PP in this instance. And of course, Kokoro's string pressure is complemented by this bad boy right here. This is the reset throw. This is just quarter circle forward T. This gives Kokoro plus six. And after this move ends up getting performed, you can end up doing a free follow-up mix-up afterwards. This is a really good pressure throw. And this awesome throw is complemented by Kokoro's signature elbows. Her forward forward P. Really good stun when it hits. Safe on block. Great from like mid-range. A really good move. And on top of this, Kokoro also has pretty decent lows that can even lead into like mix-ups. Or can be used as pokes. If you like Rushdown, Kokoro's your gal. Other good characters that you can rush down with can include Zack, Christy, Rig, Nico. You can even try rushing down characters like Mai Spine, like Kula, Elliot, even uh, Momoji, Honoka, or even well, more ranged characters like Hitomi, Janli, and or like Diego are okay. The next place I'm gonna look at is essentially the opposite of Rushdown. Yes, that's right. This is Turtlein. And who better to illustrate Turtlein than the arguable best girl herself, the purple haired badass Ayane. If Rushdown is based around buttons, then Turtlein is based around keeping the opponent's buttons from hurting you. I know what you're thinking. Turtlein is not just simply running away from your opponent. That's just, well, running away. What Turtlein is, is using your defensive ability to exhaust your opponent. Ayane is so good at Turtlein because her playstyle just simply complements that type of play style. For instance, right here is her back twirl, so her down back P plus K, a so really good tool. Her attacks tend to have a lot of range. A lot of her moves can also set up her back turn stance, where if you end up pressing um, back back or up plus punch, she ends up um, creating space. So essentially, Ayani's very good at keeping her opponent from well, running at her. What makes Ayane strong is that the opponents are eventually going to get tired of getting hit by moves that end up like reaching really far. So what's that going to mean is that they're going to become impatient and then they're going to become even more vulnerable to your turtle. In. The trade-off to this is that a lot of Ayane's moves are very unsafe on block. Actually, this move, Ayane's down for H plus K is only minus three on block in Dead or Life 5 last round. Oh, I missed this move. But yeah, if you like Turtlein, then Ayane's your girl. Other good characters to turtle with can include Neo Tengu, Hitomi, Jan Lee, Hayate, well, ninjas are generally pretty good at Turtlein, or other ones like Momiji, and of course, the myth himself, 
Ein. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at Turtlin's brother. Yes, that's right, Spacen. Naturally, Spacen does complement Turtlin, but where Turtlin is focused entirely around defense, Spacen is based around, well, keeping your both your opponent and fighting at a distance where you can kind of apply your offense on your opponent more comfortably than they can apply their offense on you. This is also really good for kind of setting up whiff punishes, for instance. Good spacing is usually complemented by good footsies. Footsies is usually the notion of hovering like back and forth around the tip range of your pokes. What that means is that if you can apply good footsies on your opponent, then you can sometimes induce them to whiff, which can end up leading to whiff punish opportunities. And if you haven't guessed it, Hayate's forward forward punch is a really good move, can lead to hits on like numerous hit levels, even has like a chargeable guard break move. It's like a really good move. Along with moves such as like quarter circle forward K, I guess a down forward uh, H plus K, well sparingly, quarter circle back P, like there's like a lot of good moves that like Hayate has. If you like spacing, Hayate's your guy. Other good spacing character choices can include of course the Queen of Turtle and Ayane, Hitomi, Jan Lee, Hayabusa is okay. Uh, Lisa, who I also forgot to say, is also good at, well, really good at Turtlin. Uh, Kula, Mai, Neo Tengu. Uh, Elliot's also really good at spacing. Uh, Momiji. So, I mean, like, any of these choices are really good if you want to try and employ either a spacing game or kind of like a footsies based game. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at yet another defensive oriented playstyle. This time, we're going to be taking a look at Zonin. Dead or Alive 6 and Dead or Alive 5 last round are 3D fighters. So, I'll just let you know right now that there is limited opportunities for Zonin, but it does exist in this game. Whereas Turtlin's based around good defense and Spacing's based around keeping the opponent at the well, essentially at the range that you want so you can whip punish them easily. Zoning is solely focused around... Well, it's basically can almost be like a combination of these in the sense that it's about keeping the opponent where you want them to be and almost to an extent where they essentially like just can't like do anything to you. Like, as you can probably guess, Zonin is mostly a 2D fighter thing when you have projectiles. Zonin is about controlling your opponent's... Just basically controlling your opponent's movements, keeping them right where you want them to be at all times. Like, it again, in, in 3D fighters such as like D-Way, it's not as common, but good zone and you can feel like the opponent just can't like do anything to you. Neo Tengu's good at zone because, well, for starters, she's one of the few characters in Dead Alive to have a projecta. Like, I'll just let you know that this move right here, the win, is a gimmick, but solely because this move exists, the opponent has to respect it. Other things is, Neo Tengo has really good mobility. Her moves have a lot of range. It can knock the opponent away, which aids in her turtling. But yeah, again, her mobility is really good and her attack ranges are also really good. She's slow as hell though, so that's a trade-off. But if you like zoning, then Neo Tengo is one of your best choices. Other characters you can zone with, you can try like Ayane, uh, La Mariposa, Mai, Kula, Raidu, you can also try zoning with Momiji, Hayabusa, Hayate, or like any of the ninjas, along with uh, Jan Lee or Hitomi also. And now we're going to shift to a more offensive based playstyle. Yes, we're going to be taking a look at Grappling. Grappling is simply a playstyle based around throwing your opponent. If you hit a lot of throws as a grappler in Dead or Alive, you are probably doing something right. As you guessed, grappler throws deal a lot of damage. To top it off, grapplers have a nice little perk where their throws are on average a frame or two faster than others. For instance, they have a four frame neutral throw and a six frame punish throw. I mean, that is really good. Tina is a really good grappler because she has some of the strongest throws in the game. And her general striking ability is also like pretty good for a grappler. I mean, she just has some like really nice tools and she also has this move. What makes Tina having pretty good striking ability particularly dangerous for her is because when she ends up stunning the opponent, if they end up going for a hold, then they're going to be eating a tremendous amount of damage from a high counter throw. The downsides of grapplers is that their strike speeds can be a little 
on the slow side. And they also don't necessarily have the best neutral games. If you like throwing people around, then Tina is the waifu for you. Stronger, even tougher. Other than Tina, the grapplers in Dead or Alive can include her daddy Bass Armstrong, a good reset grappler. Uh, Mila is a good striker grappler. Bayman's like a defensive grappler. Hayabusa is basically like a ninja grappler. T uh, Lisa's a good uh, turtley keep out grappler. Same with Neo Tengu. Raidu has some strong throws. Uh, Rachel likes to play basketball. I mean that she's a good balance between um, st strong strikes and strong grappling. And last but not least, we have the speedy grappler Hanukkah. Yes, she is a grappler, so I guess it makes her a Moe grappler. Alright guys, let me know what you think of the video quality thus far, because the new clips were recorded on a PlayStation 5, and I'll say that the quality is surprisingly legit. However, the sound quality actually does come off as a bit dodgy. But this is still like a huge bump up from the PlayStation 4 Pro. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to join top tier fighters to support this help and I do appreciate it. I personally want to give a huge thank you to X2009, Samurai Hashi, and Sphinx that have supported me greatly thus far. This video is endorsed by Smart Esports and Trollcoin. Anyways, let's continue. Wait is over. Let's begin. We're going to open up with arguably the most intuitive playstyle. Yes, that's right. We're looking at Rushdown. Fight. And who better to look at Rushdown than the shield bashing princess herself, Cassandra Alexandra. Just kidding. Rushdown's all about victory by keeping the opponent on the defensive through utilization of effective mix-ups, frame traps, and just general pressure. This can entail getting in close and working your safe mix-ups. Cassandra's good at Rushdown because her moves come out fast, like a really fast 10 frame AA, her BB is good, and also she is really safe on top of having a lot of moves that are frame advantage, for instance. To go along with Cassandra's great frame advantage moves and frame traps, she also has good lows such as down back K and also has a really nice throw game, such as low throws and, well, booty drops. So in essence, opponents have to both respect Cassandra's frame advantages, her speed, so once you end up having them on the defensive, then you can end up sneaking in the throws pretty easily. Though of course, throws can be broken. The downside of Rushdown is that you have to be able to get in on your opponent in order to be able to pressure them because opponents with longer range attacks are not gonna let you get in for free. Though once you do get on them, you get buttons. So if you like buttons, I mean Rushdown, then Cassandra is the gal for you. Besides Cassandra, some other good Rushdown characters can include 2B, Amy, Tira, Maxi, Zhanghua, Yoshimitsu, Gro, Taki, along with Raphael and Talum. Next up, we're gonna be looking at what is essentially the antithesis of Rushdown, Zonin. And there's no better character to illustrate Zonin than the Whip Queen herself, Ivy. Zonin's not generally a 3D fighter playstyle, but in Soul Calibur, it's a little bit more common because Soul Calibur has long range attacks. And no character in Soul Calibur 6 excels at long range attacks better than Ivy. The essence of zoning is dominating the pace of the match by keeping the opponent exactly where you want them to be without them being able to really, well, be able to do like, anything to you. And to complement Ivy's strong zone in games, she also has really powerful command grabs, like Calamity Sympathy. If you like keeping your opponent at bay, depriving them of buttons, then Ivy's a dominatrix for you. Besides Ivy, other good zone characters can include 2B, Cervantes, Aswell, Wong. Uh, you can also zone with characters like Sung Mina or even Hilda. The next playstyle that we're gonna take a look at is Turtlin, and no character epitomizes this playstyle more than Hildegard von Krone. Turtlin is basically the opposite of Rushdown, whereas Rushdown is, for instance, offensive pressure, Turtlin is defensive pressure. Turtlin and defensive pressure is usually focused around having your opponent end up coming to you. So what that can usually entail is just simply um, hanging back, poking your opponents at range, and essentially, what you're trying to do is make the opponent impatient. When the opponent gets impatient, they'll end up doing something reckless, like running into your attacks, for instance. You see, Hilda's moveset doesn't really lend itself that well to rushdown or offensive pressure. What it lends itself better to is poke in, a keep out, 
and with punishment. Although it's Hilda's moveset doesn't really lend itself that well to offensive pressure rushdown, uh, she is pretty safe on block, so you can generally poke pretty safely with most of her moves, especially these moves right here, these charge moves. So you either hold down A or B, and these moves, well, they require a little bit of charge, but they're either safe or even possibly advantage on block. Hilda's charge moves end up complementing her turtle playstyle in the sense that you can, what you can do is you can actually end up blocking moves and you can actually charge in the block and then release it when it's ready. However, be sure ready to break throws when guarded. Pro tip, when playing Hilda, be sure to set one of your guard buttons to a shoulder button. If you like frustrating your opponent with your excellent defense, then Hilda's the princess just for you. Besides Hilda, other characters that you can turtle with can include Keelik, Astaroth, Nightmare, Ivy, Cervantes, uh, Sangmina, and characters like Mitsurugi, Haomaru, or Aswell are also okay. And if there's ever such thing as a close range turtle, then her name is Sophitia. The next place that we're gonna take a look at now is Spacen. And we're gonna be taking a look at this with the queen of Spacen herself, Sungmina, who has long reaching attacks, coupled with great movement. Oh, and one B's really cheap, by the way. Just like in the DOA 6 section, uh, Spacen and Footsies can be used almost interchangeably. What that means is just simply hovering around like the tip range of your pokes and waiting for the opponent to whiff something so you can end up, well, punishing it. Sungmita's footsies can be particularly dangerous because she has pokes that not only reach really far, but they happen to also be safe on block, because why not? And also because, let's say something like forward plus safe. You see how Sungmita doesn't even really move forward that much with this move, so, so not only is, is this his move a good poke, but it's also like a good keep out move. Sungmina also has this move here. This is down back B, or just simply known as 1B. It is a low attack that goes really far. So it's one of Sungmina's longest ranged moves. Comes out fast to the point that it's almost unreactable. So this move is a move that the opponent always has to respect. Because of its range and its speed, the opponent's going to be constantly having to sidestep or sidewalk a lot, so that can open them up for, well, a move like forward A, for instance. Oh, and then have I mentioned that 1B is pretty damn cheap. As a caveat of Sungmina's playstyle, if the opponent wants to play like extra defensive against her, Sungmina's moveset also has moves that allow her to pressure her opponent while keeping her both at a safe distance and not without too much concern about potentially overextending. The downside is that the moves can be a little slow or highly telegraphed. So Sungmina may not be one of the fastest characters, but if you love footsies, you'll love Sungmina. Some good spacing characters other than Sungmina can include Keelik, who was a similar weapon, Mitsurugi, Haomaru, Nightmare, Setsuka, Wong, uh, Raphael's good, uh, even Geralt and and to be of decent footsies. And now we're gonna be taking a look at the grappling playstyle in Soul Calibur 6. Throws in Soul Calibur are slower than other fighting games, so there's not really that much of a dedicated grappling style. However, one of the closest equivalents would be Astroth because he can do stuff like this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And this also. Actually, Astros throws are a lot of fun. Because throws aren't the fastest in Soul Calibur 6, you're gonna have to kind of mix them in your playstyle. With someone like Astro, what you're gonna do is get your opponents to try and respect your powerful on block moves. And once you have the opponent on the defensive, you can take advantage of Astro's well, really long throw range. Like hell, this guy can throw from almost like mid-range and then we'll try and sneak in throws. Either they the A throw or, well, the back A throw, which I still call B throws. Naturally, the two recommended throws will be the two main command throws, such as half circle forward A plus G, or the half circle back A plus G. And you can see there's even the just frame version. If you can get down the time in, well, perfectly smooth. Also, Astaroth has crouch throw, so he always has a throw mix-up opportunity even when the opponents crouch on them, which they will do a lot in order to try and avoid the command throws. If you love chucking people around, then Astaroth is the dude for you. Other than Astaroth, the only other characters that you can run a grappler playstyle with would probably be Ivy and maybe Cassandra. Unless you want to be a cheap ass and run Inferno. 
If you'd like more information on the characters and tactics featured, then be sure to check out both my character guides and my tutorial videos. If you'd like to support this channel, feel free to join Top Tier Fighters, the support does help and I do appreciate it. Anyways, this is Forsager signing off, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Top Tier Tips.